For the last month, I've been testing practices from peak performers to see what I could learn and apply to my life. And I found five tools that you can use to unlock insane amounts of focus. Anywhere from a piece of software that Ali Abdul uses to supplements you can buy off Amazon that a neuroscientist says that he uses. Some are free and instant, others cost money and take time. It all depends on what fits your need and how much you're willing to invest to unlock this focus, even on tasks that are very boring. Don't set deadlines, set durations. When we set parameters on ourselves, we tend to stay inside of them, and focus is no exception. For something like a goal or work project, we need to set a deadline, but when it comes to focus, we need to set a duration. And this is the amount of agreed upon time that you are going to focus. You wanna set a timer for that amount of time and put it somewhere where you could watch it and you can see it tick down. And it's always amazed me how well this works. Something about putting a, a time limit and saying, I'm going to focus for this amount of time, it does something really phenomenal. You can use your phone, you can buy a productivity timer off of Amazon, or if you wanna be like Ali Abdal, you can use a software called Rise, which automates everything for you. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but it is something that I have found very, very useful. Basically, Rise sets timers for your deep work sessions. Uh, it also separates out your breaks and it blocks certain distractions. Uh, so it'll notify you and say, hey, it looks like you're getting distracted by this. It even categorizes and gives you a score for your focus time so you can see how well you did. There's only one thing that it doesn't do, which is the second point from an author named Cal Newport. Okay, so we understand that with physical activities like running or working out, there's a warm up or a preparation phase that we need to go through that allows us to output maximum amount of effort. Which is why I found it so interesting that Cal Newport, Andrew Huberman, and multiple other very high achievers recommend a brain warm up before engaging in deep focused work. So here's what I learned from them. Right before I start a deep work session, I take a few minutes to sit quietly and slow everything down. I take deep breaths and just try to clear my head as much as possible. I do this for three to five minutes if I can. And the most important part is once I'm done with this, I get up and immediately start the thing. I've learned that you don't wanna do anything before you start creating momentum in the direction that you are focusing on. Now, we don't always have time to take five minutes to sit down and focus before a work session, but just do what you can. As little as 20 seconds can make a pretty significant difference. If anything, what I've learned is it's the mental realization that, okay, hold on, we're stopping everything else and we're starting this, we're changing directions, and it's a very conscious choice instead of just, you just kind of slide into it and you're kind of in two places at once. If you're curious about this and you want more on it, there's a book called The Road Less Stupid, and the author there talks about his entire process for doing this, specifically for generating new ideas. The third key is keeping insane focus, and it's called implementation intentions. I talked in depth on this in my last video where I, talked about how Ali Abdal uses these and my experience with them. And so if you wanna check that out, you're more than welcome. I dive very in depth into all of that. But here's a quick recap. You want to identify the top three things that could distract you or cause you to lose focus and create a if then statement for them. Here's an example of me doing this a few days ago. So on this particular task, I usually don't struggle getting started. I usually struggle like staying focused for a longer amount of time. So what I did is I identified the top three ways that I think I could lose my focus during this process and I created a if then statement for each one of those. So the first one is if I feel the urge to check how my video is performing, I will close my laptop, do 10 push-ups, and return to work. So just get some exercise, clear my head. The next one is if I see a video that I really wanna watch, then I'll simply add the video to my watch later so that I can easily find it and it'll still be there. And then I'll refocus, return back to work. And if I get tired or bored, then I'll take a short, active break, maybe take a walk, something like that, and then return to work. Now for the one that we've all been waiting for, number four, supplements. We love the idea of taking a pill that just increases your focus. Well, you can, and they're surprisingly cheap. There's a well-known neuroscientist named Andrew Huberman, and he studied extensively on focus. So when I heard him say that he has two supplements that he takes that boost his focus, I, uh, yeah, I bought them immediately. 
The two supplements that he takes are alpha GPC and L tyrosine. I've used these for a little while now. The best way I know how to describe this is it's like your field of vision just kind of narrows to what's directly in front of you. So it's not like you're jittery or amped up with energy. It's more like the distractions just kind of fade away. And especially if you combine this with a few of the other mental techniques that we've talked about, that is when you start seeing insane benefits, especially on the next one that we're gonna talk about. But if you wanna know like how and why these work, I'll leave a link to his episode with timestamps so you can go in and listen to exactly the part where I got this information. The five whys. Intense focus follows extreme clarity. I believe one of the biggest reasons that we don't have focus is we have no idea why we need to focus, like exactly why we need to focus. You've probably heard of the company Toyota, right? So the the five whys was actually designed by the founder of Toyota and that's where I found it. Super interesting. Mm. Oh man. Okay, so I've been working on this for a while now and definitely feel a drop in focus. So I'm gonna run through what we just talked about uh, and show you kind of how it works. The first thing we need to do is identify the command, which for me is Austin, you need to get this video done. So now I'm gonna ask why five times each time to the answer of the previous one. Like I need to get really clear on this because what happens is we get really tired and exhausted and we begin to lose focus because we lose sight of where we're going and why we're going there. And reclaiming that clarity is a really good way of maintaining that um, intense focus. So I wrote down my questions and answers, so I'll just read through them so it's a little bit more simple. Austin, you need to get this video done. Why? Because if you don't, you'll miss your upload schedule. And that would be bad. Why would that be bad? Because if you don't stay focused on your channel, it will slowly die along with your dream of becoming a full-time YouTuber. Okay, why does that matter? Because if your channel dies, so does your dream and your goals. Why does that matter? Then you'd have to get a job working for someone else with no control of your schedule, which is very important to me. I'd be trading my time for money. You know, the traditional clock in, clock out. Absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. My personality, however, I have a hard time staying motivated in a system like that. So in doing this, you can see that I'm actually identifying my one of my biggest fears, and that is that I'll fail and that I'll lose the control and the autonomy that comes with this job. And with the threat of failure impeccably clear and the results of that, it just gives me another burst of energy. Like focus almost happens automatically after that. And sometimes you do this and the whys are not negative. Sometimes they're really, really positive. Like why? And oh, I'm gonna do this. Why? Oh, because it's gonna lead to this, which is gonna be really cool. And that's gonna lead to that and it creates a very positive motivational force. Sometimes the lack of focus is a, is a physical tiredness and it's hard to push through that. Um, but other times it's just like, I'm just so scattered. And something like this just like, like really brings me in. When it comes down to it, we need to have satisfactory reasons. I've often said reasons are the fuel for excellence. And so many times we just expect ourselves to be focused or be disciplined just because we told ourselves to do it. And ideally, yes, we would be able to do that. And it's something to work towards. But until then, get really clear on why you're doing what you're doing. And you'll find that focus will follow that. Now, I don't use all five of these all at the same time every time I, before I sit down to work, but it gives me a toolkit to pull from when I need them. Because let's face it, sometimes we wake up and we didn't get enough sleep or we had an argument or something and we are just not on our game. And we need a little bit of something like this to give us the extra boost. So if you'd like, comment down below which one you are going to try.